Hello everyone, this is Gary DeTonico from MoreThanASnapshot.com. Today is December 15th, 2020, and Luminar is launching the new Luminar AI. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how Luminar AI works for editing a basic portrait. I'm also launching a course all about Luminar AI. And if you want information about the program or my course, check out the description down below. All right, in this video, I want to show how you might edit a portrait in Luminar AI. This is a raw file, and there's all kinds of tools we can use for portraits. But first, let's look at what uh, this program has chosen for templates. It has picked Experimental, Offbeat, Monochrome, and Blockbuster. And I just want to show you some of these uh, experimental ones look pretty cool. Burnt Film. You'll notice that when they do the template, it's not just slider adjustments. They've added uh, overlays and all kinds of things. I think that one looks pretty cool. I like that as well. That's interesting. And I like that. That one might be my favorite. I don't know. I'm somewhere between this one and this one. Uh, let's let's go with this one. All right. So now I have a template. This is the before and this is the after. It looks really good. I don't you know that a whole lot more needs to be done, right? If I wanted to, I could see um, what the effect would be if it was uh, turned down a bit. So with this kind of effect with an overlay, you, you have to have it turned up quite a bit, but it doesn't have to be at 100%. Although I think in this case, it looks fine at 100%, so I'm going to leave it there. All right. Next, I'm going to head over to Edit. Now I can do some, some things a little bit more manually if I wanted to. Um, you'll notice again, wherever there's a little dot, that is where this template has made adjustments and I think exposure wise the only thing that uh, I might tone down is well with this bright highlight here I guess there has to be a bright highlight here but let me just maybe take the highlight down a small amount all right now I think most of the action here is going to be in the portrait tools and you can see we have a bunch of different AI portrait tools. One of them is Face Light, and it's being used a little bit already. And I don't think we need much more because then it'll start to look strange. But you can see there that it's lightening up the face. That was where it was starting. And they had chosen, the AI chose around 15. Now she's already a pretty slim girl, so we don't need to slim the face or anything. Uh, and the AI didn't do it either. But just for the sake of showing you, that's what it would look like if you did. And of course, you would never want to do 100%. It would make people look strange. But sometimes you might want a little bit of face slimming, not in this particular case. Now, working with the eyes, you can see that we can change the color of the eyes, or you could just choose the same color to enhance the color that's already there. So it looks like she has brown eyes. Let's say if I choose brown eyes, you can see it just makes it a lighter, more vibrant brown. That's because the iris visibility is turned way up. So we can tone that down a bit. Her eyes were quite dark even though they were lit. But we might just bring it up a little bit so that they're a little bit more visible. The iris flare is the little catch light at the bottom of her eyes. I use studio lighting on this shot so there is already um, a catch light at the bottom of and the top of the eyes. So I don't need a whole lot of this effect, but if I crank it all the way up, you can see that that light just gets brighter and brighter. So I'm just going to use a small amount of iris flaring because we already have nice catch lights. The eye whitening, uh, the eyes look pretty white to me. So I don't think we need too much of that. If we go too far, it's going to look strange. 
So just a small amount of eye whitening. Enlarging the eyes. Uh, her eyes look like they're pretty well open, so I don't need to enlarge the eyes, but just to show you what it looks like. Again, this is something that can get weird real fast. I think her eyes were fine in the size that they were. But even so, it did do a good job of, of enhancing them. Red eye removal. In this case, there is no red eye, so I don't have to worry about that. Dark circle removal. That would be under the eyes. I don't really have any dark circle uh, to remove, but I'll push it up just to see. And it is getting a little brighter down here, but it's not really having any effect because there is no, no real dark circles. They had a small amount of it turned on, and I'll just leave it that way. Uh, improve the eyebrows. She already has really good eyebrows, so it doesn't uh, really need it. But I'll crank it up, and you can see that they get really dark, which is way too overdone. If I turn it down to nothing, you can see that the eyebrows are pretty thick just the way they are. But I'll just um, put a small amount to darken the color of them a little bit. All right, and then we have some uh, mouth, uh, lip. Uh, adjustments that we can make. The lip saturation, that's probably fine, but I'll crank it up just so we can see that they're getting red here. I get lip redness. You can really crank that up. Again, I might just add a small amount of lip redness because the lights were creating some shine. So this one is actually, I think, um, helping out a lot. All right, lip darkening. Okay, we're going to use some lip darkening for the same reason. Actually, with this lighter, I'm, I'm liking quite a lot of it. And there's no teeth showing, so we don't need to do that. So I think as far as the eyes and the lips go, uh, that will work. I'm going to close the face AI, face AI and go to Skin AI. It's already using some Skin AI, so I'm going to take it down for a second just to see what we're working with. She has pretty good skin, but there are some small blemishes and bumps and things like that. So I'm going to try the uh, remove defects. Now, if you were to do this manually in Photoshop, of course you could do it. If you knew what you were doing, you could do a frequency separation and you probably could do a better job than what this is going to end up doing. But this is so easy and so fast. It's definitely worth it. And the results are pretty good. So now I'm increasing the skin smoothing. But I don't want to increase it so much that it it starts to look fake. I'll just go all the way to show you. See, now it gets really overly smooth. I'm going to cut it down. Maybe somewhere around there. And then the shine removal, she does have some shine. Let's see how that works. I think the shine is kind of uh due to the kind of lighting we used and it's ne it's kind of needed to be there, but we can tone down that effect a little bit. All right, let's take a look at the before and after for these sliders. So this is the before. And this is the after. So I might need to turn this up just a little bit more. All right, before. And after, let's try the line. Okay, this is 
totally different because now it's showing the whole effect before and after. So that is a pretty big difference. All right, now let's move on to body AI, but I'm going to have to zoom out. All right, so with the shape of the body, we can make her thinner, which doesn't make sense because she's very thin to begin with. So if anything, maybe we'd go a little, just a little bit wider. And the abdomen is not in the shot, so we're not going to use that slider. If we wanted to make it a high key, we could just already has a black background so I don't really think that the high key effect is going to work here but no I don't like that at all doesn't work with this particular photo but that's fine all right so now we've done all kinds of adjustments with the AI tools and it, it works pretty well and it's nice and fast and easy uh, now we can do some Pro adjustments here. It's made some optical adjustments already. Uh, we can defringe, and I don't think we need to do anything else there. Highlight contrast. I might bring that up just a small amount. Midtone contrast. Nope, I'm not going to adjust that one. And I'm not going to adjust the uh, shadow contrast. Color harmony. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that. And the dodge and the burn. This one we will try out. So. The lighten is your dodge, and I'm going to have to make the brush size smaller, and I'm going to make the strength much, much less, because any effect we want, we want a, a very subtle effect. So whenever you dodge and burn, you want to hit the highlights with the lighten tool. So I'm going to have to make the brush even smaller. just enhancing any of the highlights that already exist. All right, so the strength of that is still probably a bit much, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with darken and I'm going to use the same strength. I might make the size just a little bit bigger. Same thing, I'm looking for the dark areas that already exist. And I'm just contouring those areas. All right, I might pull down the amount a little bit just to make it a little bit more subtle. All right, so there's uh, the before and the after. And I don't think there's anything I need to clone out. So. Let's just check out the before and the after. If I want to see the split screen. It's a pretty dramatic difference. And I kind of like the effect. And all I have to do then is just apply that. Because I used it as a I used it as a Photoshop plugin. And there's the finished product. But if I wanted to, I'm in Photoshop, so I could continue editing and doing all kinds of other extra adjustments. 
Luminar AI has some pretty interesting and powerful tools. And I just like how you can get in there, do a quick edit, and come out with a nice looking image without much work. So I think you should try Luminar AI. If you click on the link, there's probably a free trial. And if you decide to purchase it, right now they have it on sale. And you can always use the coupon code SNAPSHOT to get an extra 15% off. Also, don't forget to check out the link to my course. I'll put it in the description down below. And if you decide you want to become a SNAPSHOT member, you can get access to all of my courses. And that's probably the best way to join more than a SNAPSHOT. So I hope to see you in the next course.